most magical spots in the whole of Greece. We are at Cape Sunio at the Temple of Poseidon, which uh, you can see in the background there. Uh, people come from around the world to see this place, this magical place at sunset. Um, it truly is so it's, it's enticing. As you can see the sea and the sun slowly beginning to reach the sea and to set behind the sea in the background. Um, this temple was it's a Doric temple. Uh, it had 34 columns uh, when it was originally built in 444 BC, uh, which was the same year that the Acropolis, the Parthenon, on the Acropolis was built. Now only 15 columns remain. Uh, it truly is a magical, magical place. It's dedicated to, as its name says, Poseidon, the god of the sea. Uh, now tell me, it's very windy here, please let me know if you can hear me uh, or if you just hear wind going Please let me know, can you hear me speaking? Because it's a shame for you to miss out all this uh, information I'm preparing to give to you. Uh, so this uh, temple stands on a rock which some people say is around 65 and others say is up to 73 uh, meters high above the sea level. Um, this was part of a whole uh, sanctuary of temples dedicated to various gods of the cities including Athena and it was it's the only one that has actually survived. They were surrounded by a wall, actually. See, the wall behind me is a remnant of the wall that used to circle these, uh, this sanctuary of temples. Um, there's also a very... <laughs> selfies everywhere. Look, everyone is here. It's always a busy time. As I said, people come from all over the world, especially at this hour, to, to photograph this beautiful view of the temple at sunset. So, uh, going back to the story, the mythology of this temple, this is also known as the place where the king Aegeo uh, awaited his son Theseus, who had gone to Crete to kill the Minotaur. And uh, they had agreed that um, if he managed to kill this Minotaur, this monster who would, was half man, half bull, who lived in a maze, um, if he managed to kill him, that he should return with white sails. And if he didn't, then the boat would be returning with black sails. So the King Ayao waited for his son, for the ship to come back. And upon seeing the black sails, because his son, although he returned triumphant and he had actually killed the Minotaur, had forgotten to change the sails. So although he returned triumphant, uh, his father saw the black sails and standing right here, look at this incredible cliffs here. Very dramatic rocky cliffs here. Uh, he plunged to his death uh, from a broken heart. Now look at that sunset. So he plunged to his death, heartbroken that his son Theseus had died. And in his honor, the sea where he had died was named after him, the Aegean Sea, as we know it today. So this is a very beautiful and very tragic tale. I don't think there are any happy tales in Greek mythology, are there? A really, truly magical place here. Yeah, I'm going to 
Ah, here there's a group of people even playing cards right across the temple of Poseidon. <laughs> Apparently this place is also known very much for its uh, magical energy. Uh, I was uh, reading in the BBC that the ancient Greeks, like the ancient Chinese, uh, used Feng Shui. The ancient Greeks also believed very much in the alignment, the geographical alignment of their temples. And there was a very mystical um, method to how they built their temples. saying with the astronomical and astrological significance of the way the temples were built in ancient Greece um, that there's this temple exactly this temple behind me the temple of Poseidon is uh, underneath the alignment of four ascended planets now what does that mean well uh, according to teacher, healer, and author Elizabeth Ann Morris, who works internationally teaching uh, the, what, her, what is called the sacred um, oracle teachings, uh, which are to do with connecting uh, modern uh, people with ancient wisdom. Uh, she says that the ancient Greeks uh, were masters of astrology, as they were of astronomy, and truly understood the purpose and the of the planetary alignment uh, of how temples were built according to planetary alignments and the purpose and impact of that. Um, she says of this temple right here behind me that you see this beautiful temple, uh, that it was built in such a way that it sits in exact alignment with what are known as the four ascension planets, Orion, Sirius, Pleiades, and Neptune. And these uh, planets were considered, and still are, the ascension planets, as uh, they are called, because they are places where apparently they one can access if they connect to them with higher wisdom and learning. Now, in the metaphysical world, they are considered to be the galactic portals or gateways to other universes and planets. It's pretty out there, I know. Uh, but there is that side uh, of uh, the energy here. Why do people come here uh, to meditate so much? Why do they come here and feel so good? I think it makes uh, quite a lot of sense. So. They can serve, she says, as a way of expanding consciousness beyond what we can see and know in a physical form in this reality. Now, teacher, healer, and author Elizabeth Ann Morris, who, as I said, uh, her website is sacredoracleteachings.com, also says that the sea surrounding the temple, which I just have been showing you all this time, 
uh, is also charged with the energy of sonics from dolphins that swim in it. And she advises that if you want to come here to meditate and relax and connect with the magic of the area and its ancient wisdom and beauty, don't try too hard. Just come here, sit here and see how you feel. Now, um, so that's another aspect of this beautiful place. It's got history, it's got mythology behind it, it's got uh, metaphysical uh, uh, magic behind it. And okay, if you're not into any of those things, just admire the incredible beauty of this place. That's all you need. Even if you're one of those people who says, well, I just want to go somewhere lovely. You've got that here for sure. Now I'll stop talking and just uh, show you a little bit more. If you've just joined us, I'm Alexia Mbrazi. The Greek City Times is roving reporter, reporting live from Cape Sunion, from the Temple of Poseidon. This is uh, on the southernmost point of Attica. It's about one and a half hours drive from the center of Athens. watching us from and if you've ever been here before if it's one of the places that you'd like to visit This is a, a temple built in the Doric style in 444 BC, the same year as the Parthenon was built. And uh, it's in perfect alignment in an isosceles triangle with the Temple of Hephaestus in Athens and the Temple of Amphiaea in Aegina. It was also one of the most uh, protected places by the Athenians during the Peloponnesian Wars because it looks out to so many, so many aspects of the sea from so many directions. And so it was an incredible point of defense. And when Greek sailors returned from wars or from other journeys, they would come towards here and see the gleaming marble columns and know they were home.
busy throughout the day, but uh, there are, of course, magical moments when you can find yourself actually completely alone here. Not at sunset, though, I'm afraid, unless you come maybe on a winter day. People of all ages relaxing and taking in these views. I wish I could go into the temple, and um, you can do that, but only in virtual reality right now. You could go to the VR project offices uh, in uh, Monastiraiki and enter the temple inside as it was intact before uh, it became 15 columns and it was 34, and see the views all around through virtual reality at the VR project in Monastiraki where they've created a, an archaeological app. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. That's not going to stop me. <laughs> thank you for watching us and thank you for joining us. I'm Alexia Mbrazi, Greek City Times' roving reporter. And I have the joy and pleasure of being here in Sweden. the temple of the side of my There's the moon. Byron fell madly in love with this place as well and uh, he was really naughty you know what he did tell us if you know what Lord Byron did right here at Cape Sunio and it does not involve a woman before you start having a dirty mind okay well I'm not seeing anyone writing to me what Lord Byron did he he did graffiti here on a column. Yep. Hooligan. He wrote his name on one of the columns. And then he wrote about Sunyo in his poem Don Juan. He wrote Place me in Sunyon's marble steep where nothing save the waves and I may hear our mutual murmurs sweep. We had some, as you probably know very well, some very, very tragic fires in Greece just uh, over a month ago in Mati and uh, the thereabouts area. And uh, the whole country was in mourning. There's still sadness at the bottom of our hearts. But coming to a place like this is truly a healing experience and uh, reminds us that, thank God, there's so much beauty in this country to soothe us.
temple of Poseidon, dedicated to the god of the sea, with his three-pronged spear. Thank you for watching. Let's go get a better view of the sea here. Hello to Chicago. Hello to all of you from everywhere you are in the world. Now from here you can walk down to a little beach, about 15 minutes steep walk down a, a little bit and uh, there's a hotel there with some tavernas, you can have a dip, have some food, there's also a cafe about 5 minutes away from here, so there are things to do nearby, you can come here and spend the day with a Red. joined us, we are at Cape Sunion, the southernmost uh, point of Attica, where the Temple of Poseidon stands, some 60 to 70 meters above the sea level. And the Temple of Poseidon is a Doric temple built in 444 BC at the time of the Parthenon. It's one of those magical spots to visit in Attica and I would say all of Greece. telling you about in the little beach where you can come and swim. There's a little path going where those people are. If you follow the path down, you can walk down and go there before or after coming here. There's someone going off in their boat for the tour into the sunset, like the end of a Hollywood film. <laughs>
So as I said earlier, whether you come here for simply the natural and ancient glory of this spot, for the physical beauty, for the metaphysical beauty, for the historical or mythological importance of this place, you're bound to enjoy a memorable experience. I'm not one that was keen on touristy experiences, but everyone is so so calm here and so happy to be here. You can feel it. That uh, it's actually no problem being around people. So many people. You don't lose on, on the magic. There it is, sinking behind clouds into the sea. Yes, everyone is soaking it up. It's very peaceful. And everyone who's in love is feeling more in love. And whoever is not in love is wishing they were in love. We're just enjoying the beautiful feeling of being in love with this view. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, sun. There goes the sun. Do, 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 do. There goes the sun. I say it's all right. It'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day here and everywhere. Being shoot away. Let me just catch as many. Before, before being shooed away completely, I want to say goodbye. I'm Alexia Brazi. Greek City Times is a roving reporter and um, really, really happy to be talking to you from this absolutely magical place in uh, Cape Sunio, the Temple of Poseidon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the beauty. Really, it was, it was very magical, this moment of watching the sun setting here. And uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, you are here with us. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the history and the mystery and the, the incredible uh, impact that this temple has had on Greek civilization and is still having on people all around the world today who come here from every corner of the planet to see it, to feel it, to enjoy it, and uh, to discover it. Um, so, thank you, thank you for joining me. 
I'm Alexia Mbrazi and I wish you a good night and uh, send us your comments if you if you have any tips to share about Sunyo, about any information you want to share about the temple or anything else I've said. It would be great to share that with you and with other viewers. Bye bye. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, uh, night, whatever is going on wherever you are. Bye bye from Sunyo. I'm Alexia Ambrasi.